What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Karina and I love to tell stories. So today I'm going to be showing you how I went about making these stays or what would more commonly be called nowadays a corset for my book trailer in order to match the stays that Ruth is wearing on my book's front cover. I self-published this book and I've talked a lot about it here on this channel so if you like storytelling or self-publishing or anything like that do make sure to subscribe down below. Also, before we get started real quick, I thought I would ask if I do these types of videos in the future, more costuming based videos, would you guys prefer to see videos like these where I am kind of vlogging as I make a piece or would you prefer them to be DIY videos where maybe I show you how you could make garments, for example, like a cape or a partlet or something like that? Let me know down below which you guys would be more interested in seeing. this series, the first video, this is a two-part series, I showed you how I went about making the mock-up. I decided to have this be a separate video, for obvious reasons, length. As far as timeline purposes, in case it's been a while since you watched the first video, or you're not really sure where this fit into everything else that was going on as far as my self-publishing, the first part of this video is going to start with me buying the fabric for the finished stays. Now I had not quite finished the mock-up yet, so this was before the end of the last video that this video starts. But I went ahead and bought the fabric, and I think I bought the boning as well, and I want to say that this was in mid-February, and my book came out in March, and the book trailer came out during release week, just to kind of give you an idea of the time frame we were working with here. Okay, so I got more boning. It is now February 13th, so I figured first off I'd show you guys the fabric that I bought. Okay, so here is the fabric that I have for the actual stays. I am making them to match the pair of stays that Ruth is wearing on my book cover. So for the main fabric, I bought this 100% cotton yellow fabric that suits me a lot better than a lighter yellow wood. I wanted to make sure it wasn't too dark because her stays aren't terribly dark, but the, the kind of palish yellow is a color that uh, according to my research, seemed like a color that they could have had. I didn't want to do gray or brown. That was boring. So I bought this, and I bought enough to make where uh, the fabric will be uh, two layers thick. Normally, I feel like whenever I've seen other people make stays, a lot of times they use a heftier fabric, like a linen or a wool. I cannot afford linen or wool, and especially since I'm t not very experienced doing this, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on the fabric right now. So I bought this for the binding. I checked out the remnant section and dug through everything to make sure I could find what I wanted because I saved a lot of money. I think overall, between my coupons and buying remnants, I only spent like $7 on this fabric at Joann's or something crazy like that. I mean, it was nuts. So this is what I'm going to do the binding with, just kind of a plain, basic, pale color to bind the edges. And then I'm going to line it in this light brown, also 100% cotton. All this fabric is 100% cotton. I cannot stand polyester. <laughs> Plus, I think it looks more natural. I mean, it doesn't. nobody's going to think it looks like linen, but at least it looks more natural. And I'm going to line it with this. Now, I almost bought a like gray fabric for the lining, but I was like, uh, that's going to show through. And I tested it, and this will be fine. It's not going to show through, especially because I'm going to have this two layers thick. But I thought this was a good color combination for the stay is very natural looking but also a nice yellow. I can wear yellow, I just have to wear very bright yellow. I know that like mustard is really in or at least it has been recently and I cannot wear mustard. I cannot wear colors that have that type of tone and I can't wear pale yellows or pinks or the grayish tones like the grayish pinks, the grayish hues of different colors are really in right now like I feel like mustard kind of has some gray in it and like that kind of pink colors like that I cannot wear those they look terrible on me I have to wear bright colors for example I have this shirt that is a very bright yellow but it is not a like like a pale yellow and it's not a mustard yellow and it's <laughs> how did I manage that it is literally almost the exact same color as the fabric I bought. Well, that's good, because I know this looks good on me. <laughs> so, yeah, I have the fabric. 
as of me filming this video showing you the fabric, I haven't finished the stays, or the mock-up for the stays, but um, by the time this video is coming out, I will have, so if you haven't watched that video, make sure you watch that first. I am getting a little short on time here. <laughs> so I tried, like, adjusting my pattern based on, like, the one inch here and the half inch here, and I haven't even adjusted for this part I took in right here, but it's still already smaller than this. I'm wondering if the smallest margin for error would just be to find a way to trace this directly on my wrapping paper, or if that would just cause more error because my lines wouldn't be perfect because it would be hard to weigh this down. I don't know. So, I'm not sure how we're going to go about doing this. I might just need to trace it, but I figured the front torso panel, I would just use a pattern and take in a little bit down at the bottom like I talked about to make it even, but I have kept all of my pattern pieces right here, including the ones that I did from the parchment paper, or the wax paper, and the ones I did from the wrapping paper. But the one piece that's not here is that front torso panel. And I have searched through my fabric, and searched through my patterns, and searched everywhere, and I just cannot find it. And that really stinks, because I have a strong inclination to misplacing things, but I was very careful to make sure that I always put those patterns in the same place. So, I don't know where I would have put it. I only ever did pattern work here in my room. So, I don't know what happened. Unless for some reason it would have gotten thrown away, which it wouldn't have. I am just at a loss as to where I would have put it. I wouldn't have put it on my desk, but I looked through my desk anyway. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to try to trace this thing and see how that works. I need to be wearing boots or something. No, I guess not. I have boots that are your size. You what? I don't have any boots. What about those lace-off ones? You. What? Those are ladies' boots. They wouldn't look... I guess they would look kind of ladylike. Which is not very becoming of a strong, strong knight. This is going to look horrible, though. Why would it look horrible? Because, I mean... Unless you can see my face, everything looks completely unproportionate because these are so wide. It's fine. That's how it is. Oh, no, I need my... Oh, I'm starting to feel very... Very knightly. Very chivalrous and hero-like. That's not how you wear this! What? You oh, don't have oh no, it came, it came undone when I was doing... You, you need to wear your belt much tighter. Okay, well, it came undone when I was doing my clothes. <laughs> Yeah, I was oh, like, what in the world is wrong? Belly? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. They actually literally would like take stuffing and put it in there and make it poof more. Ew. It oh, was man, right. this is, I don't think, I don't that, think tucking I don't like your pants into your socks was a thing yet. I don't like the hood as much because you can't see my nice hat. But I, I just look like the quintessential like knight. that pattern piece. In the original pattern it wasn't like one piece, it was a half a piece that you cut on a fold to make the shape of the front panel. So I guess what I'll just do is fold this in half to do that. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Okay, I have fabric, it is ironed, and now I'm going to cut out to pieces. So the instructions have you cutting out the lining separately. But I have plenty of lining even when I've done the fold, so I think I'm going to try to just cut out the lining and the fashion fabric pieces all together so that that way they're as close as possible. If that's too cumbersome for my scissors, if that's too many layers, I'll just cut the lining separately. But I, I bought a little extra of all the fabric on purpose just to be safe, make sure I had enough room. But in the picture, the fashion fabric, they don't even use all of it, so I think I will be plenty good. So check to make sure our biases are all going the right way, and then we cut. You will notice that I have folded my fashion fabric, which in this case is the yellow fabric, twice. Once because the pattern calls for it to be cut on the fold, and then again because I want my fashion fabric to be two layers thick, since I'm using a lighter weight fabric than you would if you were using like wool or linen or something like that. I didn't 
find any special instructions uh, in the pattern or on any of the pattern pieces, so I'm just going to assume that I'm doing a regular uh, seam allowance on these guys. Okay, so after further consideration, I'm not going to add extra seam allowance for the top of this and the binding. Um, including on the edges of the tabs because that would make where my thing would just stick up an extra half an inch and I already have it sized right so why would I want to do that? So yeah I'm just going to do the half inch seam allowance around the like side seams, the bottom, and then around the top of the tab. So yeah, here we go. There's four layers here and two layers here. <laughs> Maybe I'll like make a child size one if I ever need to cosplay with like one of my younger cousins or something. <laughs> here you will see me transferring the boning channel guides from the copied pattern piece lightly onto the lining fabric according to the pattern instructions. You can see that the boning channels are very narrow and were lightly marked out using dotted lines using a pencil. In the future, I would prefer, obviously, to not use just a regular pencil for this. I would prefer to get one of those disappearing ink markers. I don't have one at the moment. I don't use chalk or anything like that yet. I would like to in the future. Even though in the finished product you did end up being able to see them on the inside on the lining layer, it's not that big of a deal because nobody's going to see it and I was able to actually erase them to where they're not that visible. So, After transferring all the lines from the patterns onto my fabric, including both the boning channel guidelines and the grommet placement guidelines, it was time to start doing the first of the sewing. The first step in the sewing was to sew all of the panels together. Of course, the back two panels did not get sewn together because that provided the opening for you to lace up the stays, but the rest of the panels were attached along the side seams using just a regular seam allowance. I think I used a 5 8 seam allowance, although I cannot remember now off the top of my head. Next, I could move on to sewing the many, many, many boning channels. Then there's this clip, where I'm apparently sewing together some of my panels right sides out. I don't know, this was so long ago, I'm not really sure what I was doing, but if I figure it out, whether by looking at the garment or looking at the original pattern instructions, I will let you know. More boning channel sewing. Aha! So the mystery is solved. Apparently I was wrong. First, you had to base the edges of the panels together and do the boning channels, and then you sewed them all together. Case closed. I just found out that it was easier to just use the edge of like my the presser foot as a guide for the boning channels than all these marks. And you'll notice that my marks didn't end up lining up perfectly with where the actual boning channels went because it was easier and truer just to like 
use the edge of the presser foot. So what I found was the best way to do it was I have fourth of an inch boning, but I don't like the channels to be like super, super snug because I don't want them to like pop because um, the boning's so tight. So what I discovered is so the edge of my presser foot marks the one quarter of an inch and I could move my needle over like two clicks and that would give me just a tiny bit of extra room on that one quarter of an inch so the boning would have just a tiny bit of room to breathe. So that ended up working well. I ended up putting in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boning channels on each side. This middle pocket ended up smaller. I think I must have put in an extra boning channel or I guess just since it's narrower, since the whole piece is narrower, it ended up being a little slimmer than on the original pattern, but that's okay because I'm not doing a busk and if I ever wanted to make this lace up, I would have to take out at least one boning channel, but I'm not really planning on making this lace up anymore. I think it would look just fine like this and um, I think it'll match perfectly fine with the book cover, but it's really neat because I'm starting to be able to envision this as the one she's wearing on the book cover and it'll be so cool when I can like totally dress like her. It's gonna be so awesome. And this color is just so pretty. It's probably a little bit bright for the time period, but that's okay. We can take a little bit of license. Since I am home early now, I'm gonna work a little bit more on my stays before dinner. I'm really happy with how much I've been able to get done today. I'm really blessed. I'm really grateful. I think by tomorrow I'll have the pieces all sewn together and we will be moving on to finishing the seams and doing the binding and adding the tabs, which is part of adding the binding. So that is really exciting. Yeah, so far I am taking my time, even though so far it has, you know, been quicker than when I put the mock-up together and making sure that the seams are all really nice. Oh dear, my ponytail. My hair must still be really wet from getting out of the shower and just dripping onto my shirt, I guess. Ah, don't mind. Don't mind the spot on my shirt from my hair dripping because I took a shower when I got home from work. But anyway, they're turning out nice. I'm making sure to take time to do things right, to have good quality because I want these to last me a long time. And even though I am specifically making them for this character, I could use them for other outfits or I can even wear them under things. Like I'm hoping at some point to make a Tudor period gown. That would be a really fun project. I could wear these under that, theoretically, so that would be cool. So the boning channels are all in and the basting is all done. Now I just need to work on attaching them to each other and finishing the seams between each panel. I cut out a cardboard guide to help me make the strips all the same, per the pattern's instructions. You can see here a comparison of the unfinished raw edges on the right and the soon-to-be hand-tacked down finished edges on the left. I am trying to cut some of the original curve of the pattern back into that middle panel of the stays, like where your sides are. Because of how much I had to size down the pattern, a little bit of the curvature of the pattern was lost. And as I'll mention later, it didn't fit quite perfectly, but 
for it being my first time size changing a pattern, I think it turned out amazing. Here's a more self-explanatory example of how I cut out the binding. And you can see that I'm also cutting multiple strips of it at once by folding my fabric before I cut. The binding on the tabs is done, the binding on the inner seams is done, and now it's just time for the binding that goes all around the entire thing. That should be, like, quick and simple, right? Shall I play epic music? <laughs> Shall I play epic music music for background music? Sure, if you want to. It's going to take me a while to set up. Just so you know. And with the binding across the bottom finished, it's time to start adding in the boning. Okay, so once again, terrible lighting. Sorry, it's nighttime. And the only light I have is my big overhead light with the fan. So I boned the stays. But I still didn't quite have enough boning. Um, I had to bone a few more channels than I did in the mock-up, just because of whatever, you know, having the channels smaller. Or... So I used up all of my boning. Oh dear. The seam is letting go there where I had finished the seam. That's weird. Didn't do that in any of the rest of the places. Anyway, <coughs> I had enough boning for everything except the channels right here. No, those are boned. That one's boned. This one and then both of these are not boned. And then you can see here there is a bony channel right next to the seam. There, I don't know if you can see it, it's right there. But I would need to move that over because it's overlapping just a bit and I would need to move it this way so that that way it wouldn't be overlapping the other boning channel. But I don't have the boning for that anyway so these are quite boned at the moment and I'm not worried really about not having them quite boned as much as the pattern calls for. At some point I would like to get more boning and just seam rip the binding on this side off where it needs to be and then lift it up and whatnot and that way I could put a boning channel in and then sew it back down. But yeah, I, according to the instructions, left more room at the top where the boning ends so that that way Whenever I go to sew the binding, I'm not hitting the boning channels, I just sew it along the top. And then, you know, fold it down on the back and hand sew it down, which then it doesn't matter if it overlaps the bones because I'm just catching the one layer of fabric anyway. But yes, I'm definitely liking how these are turning out. I like that I chose to go with two layers of the yellow because they're a little bit more rigid that way. Oh, and the tabs uh, look like they're overlapping too much, but whenever I actually put it on me, uh, I think they'll be just fine. I've done a little bit of a test run just kind of holding it around my back and seeing how it looks. But yeah, I think that these will work really good. And at this point, I guess all I have to do now is add the binding around the top and then they are done. Oh, and then I would have to punch the holes and uh, do the eyelets for the lacing, but that shouldn't take too long. The process of getting the binding all pinned in place around the curves of the top especially, was kind of a painstaking and at times annoying process. It took a lot of ironing and pinning and unpinning and re-ironing and what have you. It was especially hard around the shoulder straps because the so shoulder straps are so skinny that if you don't use a very, very narrow seam allowance, the binding will actually meet and even overlap in the middle. And so it was kind of a tricky process. So it's Sunday and I'm just wearing my tricorn hat for no reason. I just decided I like wearing it so I'm going to wear it. And 
I still have to do the rest of the eyelets and the binding on the top, sewing it down on the back with hand sewing. It is 11.15 and I need to film my book trailer this afternoon. One of the shots is a night shot, one of the shots is a dusk shot, one of the shots is preferably a sunset, sunset shot, but it's kind of cloudy out today, so I don't know that it would really make a difference. And one is just a regular day shot. The rest of them I'm going to do in my attic against the wood walls and floor to mimic the look of a ship. I need to get on the stick and hurry up and finish these so I can film this afternoon. It is now four o'clock and I still have not finished the top layer of binding. I'm getting ready to start the other row of violets, but I need to be ready by five so I can get in my costume and go out there. Um, I don't think there's any way I'm going to get the attic shots today. I think I'm going to just have to get those here and there by myself throughout the week. That shouldn't be the end of the world. Probably take longer to get in my costume than anything else, but this is a lot of just sitting and doing nothing but hand sewing. I mean, I'm trying to watch YouTube and listen to music, but I really, really enjoy hand sewing when I'm watching something when I'm already going to be watching something. But trying to find something to watch to occupy myself for two hours or more straight of hand sewing is a little bit less enjoyable. So I'm gonna try to find somewhere else to sit. And if if I get super, super bored, I may even just ask my mom if she wants to watch a Hallmark movie, even though I don't really like Hallmark movies because it would be something to watch other than binging YouTube, <laughs> which gets old after a little while, so. <sighs> under the wire on this. The okay, it is now... Oh, blurry camera. Okay, it is now... 540. I still have a few pins in the stays, but I'm calling them good. I have all the eyelets done, and I'm frantically removing my nail polish and getting ready to go do my makeup and yada 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 for the video. <laughs> so I feel like I never really mentioned this, um, but I feel like it's worth mentioning that even though I had a few pins in my stays when I was doing the book trailer, you couldn't tell. So I didn't compromise in any way on how my book trailer looked by wearing them when they weren't quite finished. The costume still looked just how I wanted it to, you know, it didn't look like there was a half-finished costume piece. And I also forgot to mention that if you would like to go watch the book trailer, which I, I have to say I'm very happy and I'm very blessed with how it turned out. It was my first time ever doing something like that. I've played around with, like, filming stuff, me and my brother, my whole life. But it was my first time, like, trying to make a more professional, more polished, you know, make it more the vibe of, like, a real short film kind of piece. And I feel like for a first try, it was actually pretty good. Maybe that will encourage you if you want to make your own book trailer someday, but you don't have a whole lot of filming experience like me. So I will be sure to link that up in the cards and down in the description in case you would like to go watch that. It would really mean a lot to me because I put a lot of effort into it and I'm really proud of it. And so I filmed the book trailer in stage that were not quite finished, but still had a few pins in them, but I got it done and this is the part where I lost my steam. So I have a strong tendency of starting projects, losing my steam for a while, and then coming back to them. And I know that I had originally intended to put out this video, like, over a month ago, but I was so tired of working on the stays that I just decided to wait and I ended up deciding that I wanted to go back and bone a few of the places that I'd run out of boning to bone. And that required me to buy more boning, it also required me to pull out the stitching in a few places, and I actually have the finished stays here, 100% done, finally, to show you the places that I put in boning and a few of the other things that I did while not on camera because I was started filming and I just wanted to get it done and this was like three weeks ago. I was kind of just over the whole filming while I so think. <laughs> so these are the stays. They are very nice. I love how they turned out. And the changes that I made were 
first of all, doing something the pattern called for, and that was putting a grommet right here for the uh, shoulder straps to connect to. I'm going to mention in a minute that the shoulder straps are actually way too long. There were a couple of minor sizing issues that if I were to ever make this pattern again, I would adjust. The other one being that I think I just left a little bit too much room here at the top. Like I had to put a seam in right where this is, but that could have been a little closer to the bottom. I didn't want to cut it too close though because I was concerned if it was too tight, the boning would start poking through, so it's really not that big of a deal. But as far as boning that I went back and did, you'll remember my mentioning in this video, I'm not sure if I was able to show it to you very well, but where these seams are finished, and this, this seam is not letting go, it just, I was a little bit not straight with my sewing line there. These places where I have turned out the seam connecting the panels together and bound the edges. These are each a boning channel. There is also a boning channel right here that I believe required me to add an extra piece of stitching because since I was sizing down the pattern, this and this overlapped, so I needed to move this one over. So I can't remember which one it was, but one of these three was not yet boned on both sides. And so I went back and did that. There is now boning, I believe, on this side. No, 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 wait a minute. I'm getting mixed up. This side over here in all three channels as well as on this side in all three channels. Now these ones over here, while the pattern originally called for you to bone these, I did not bone this one because it would have overlapped the boning that I did with these channels right here. And so I just decided it would be easier to leave that one unboned. But I did bone this one, and you'll also notice that I did the same thing on this side, as well as I have now boned the middle. Now I'm getting ready to try these on, and this will actually be the first time that I have tried these on, boned across the middle, and with shoulder straps that don't have to be pinned in, that it will actually go through the grommet, grommets. So I'm interested to see if this middle boning will give me any extra support. It looks nicer in my opinion. It looks more like the Tudor stays that I have looked at in some of my research. Whether they were extant or reproduction, I do not remember. But the only thing is, because this was originally, like, not designed for boning, because I hadn't planned on boning it originally, and I just went through and added three pieces of boning afterwards, the boning does want to twist inside a little bit, but I've had that problem at a couple other places on these days, and once you lace them up and you have the tension there, it's really not a problem, and it really works out fine. So I think those were the main changes. I had to pull out the binding, obviously, here and when I, over here whenever I went in and added boning in places that I originally had bound over, but I just threw in a few little tiny stitches. I don't know that you can even see them. It's always nice when you're like, oh yeah, I had to go back and fix that, and then you can't even find where you had to fix it, or can't even find where you had to fix it. So here is the probably the place I was most worried about here at the very front, but it's just barely there, and honestly, it hides quite nicely. So I'm very pleased with these. Binding around all these curves was a challenge, but because I cut my binding a little bit wider than the pattern called for, I don't remember if I mentioned that or not, I was able to work with it, and even though it is a pretty thick layer of binding on the inside, normally it might be a little smaller, on the outside it turned out beautiful. So I'm very pleased with that. So I guess now that I have shown you what I believe is all of the changes I made since that last video clip, I guess it's time for me to put them on again. Take off my nice kind of cottage core jumper that I recently finished. I made a little video about that over on Instagram if you want to see just a little cut together of me working on this this jumper. But I guess it's time to go try these on again. So, apologize for the bad lighting. Here are the finished stays. So, I did not bother videoing myself getting into these because like any person who has ever tried to get into a pair of back lacing stays that can't lace up with the bunny lacing, that have to lace up with the spiral lacing, it takes forever and it's a real pain. But, just so you can see, sorry the straps might be in the way, I have laced all but the very top hole. And that is because the top hole would be way too hard. And you hopefully can see that I lace twice between the two top holes that I did choose to uh, lace through, just to anchor it. So this took quite a bit of finessing. I tried to get it to tighten up, you know, as much as it could. On that note, I think I could have made these just a hair smaller because when I lace them up as tight as they go, 
I still feel like when I bend over or if I kind of do anything more active, I feel like they're moving around just a little bit. Which, obviously, I know that, you know, it's a garment, it moves with you, but I feel like it might just not quite fit quite perfectly because I do feel like it moves around a little bit, but other than that, I think it fits pretty amazing. I feel very comfortable in these, I can breathe easily, I actually find these in some ways more comfortable than, you know, what you would normally wear in our modern era because it, like, puts the weight more evenly versus having it, you know, all in one place. Hopefully you ladies understand what I'm talking about. These are very comfortable and I have worn these, of course, for, you know, cosplay. I have not worn them fully finished for cosplay yet, but I'm sure I will at some point. And I can definitely, or almost definitely, tell a difference with this front area bone. It does feel more supportive, it does feel just better. And like I said, they don't, they're not super tight. I can actually squish it quite a bit. I mean, obviously because I'm a human and I'm squishy, but I can also put my hand in there. Uh, and it's, it's not uncomfortable at all. It's very comfortable. I don't feel at a loss for breath. This actually helps out with my posture. It helps me stand up taller because slouching not only is not very comfortable in these because then you're kind of landing yourself into all this boning, but it also looks terrible in these. <laughs> so. Uh, the other thing is that I just noticed when I laugh, because I am pulling my stomach in when I laugh, there is quite a bit of space and they do feel like they move a little bit. I don't know if that's normal. Uh, I might reach out to some of my people that I know that have done things like this before and ask if that is normal and stays when you're laughing for it to feel like they're moving, or if maybe they are still just a hair too big and next time I should size them down. But other than that, they're amazing. I could definitely go... I think all day in these, you know, unless it was a crazy hot day, especially if I conditioned up. Because, you know, one of the things they say with stays is you should condition yourself up to wearing them for long periods of time. Even though these are really comfortable, it wouldn't be smart of me to go from never wearing these to wearing these all day. But I've worn them in longer and longer increments over time, and now I'm quite comfortable in them. So, this little culprit over here, this little guy, this is the lovely leftover of spiral lacing. And what you do with this dude, you just wind him up and you stick him away in here. Something else I should mention is that if these look a little funny to just be wearing on the outside, and if you've seen them on my costume, you know, obviously I'm wearing on the outside, it's because normally in the 17th century you would wear a coat over this. Because it does look just a tiny bit to me kind of like underwear. Maybe that's just my historical brain talking because I know it's underwear for the historical time period, but it doesn't quite look like something you would wear just on the outside of your garment, if you know what I mean. Now, in the story, Ruth is very poor. She's lived by herself for a few years, and so she doesn't she doesn't really have anything to put over this. This is just what she has. And that, I don't think, would have been considered inappropriate. There was a window of time, you know, in, in I think, multiple places throughout history. It's been a while since I did all the research, but there was a time where it was acceptable for the lower classes to wear this type of thing and this is what they wore even if it, they, you know, didn't wear a coat. I have seen pictures of people wearing things like this without something over it. Now obviously I don't remember off the top of my head what those sources came from or how accurate they were, but I don't think that it's out of the question that this with a skirt and obviously a proper shift could be a complete outfit on its own. That being said, I do think it would look just a hair better. I was like, where'd the string go? I tucked it away. I think it would look just a hair better with a coat, but it, at the same time, it's it's very cute. I love the yellow. It actually looks really cute with these pants. I wish I had an excuse to wear these together, but people would be like, what is she wearing? Why is she wearing that? And why? Why? <laughs> but anyway, onto the straps, because you notice I am not wearing the straps, and that's because I think it's quite good without the straps. But I'm going to wear the straps. I don't think that strapless stays, or if you prefer the word corset, were a thing quite yet. I don't know. I think the first of those that I remember seeing came in the 18th century, but as you can see, the straps are too long. The straps should hit about here so that there is room to adjust. I'm just going to have to wing it, and this, this little knot here is from when I last laced the stays. In fact, let me get out my ribbon. The one thing that is a little tricky for me in these is bending over because it weirds, feels weird to basically have your top of your torso and the bottom of your torso connected with this stiff stuff. But that's the only thing that really feels odd to me. And I think 
based on what I've heard, that's pretty normal. And that's why they always say shoes before corset, because once you have your corset on, it's going to be really weird to try and bend over and put your shoes on. I actually originally bought this ribbon to add ribbons to masks with, because you know, the world we live in. But, uh, plenty of it, so I could spare some for lacing these up and using for, for the shoulder straps. Where did I put my little needle? I don't remember what they call these. One of those big plastic blunt needles. Makes it a lot easier to lace. I have aglets, which is the more proper thing to use, which basically attaches to the end of your thread and just lives there permanently as a needle for lacing, but I haven't bothered with that yet. I might save it for a future project. I don't know. Well, this will go through. Hope I made my... There we go. Hole big enough. So I'm trying to figure out... I've had a problem with these falling off. I mean, it's a style for you to have your straps like that, but the, they're supposed to sit like this. But as you can see, it kind of hits right there at the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of tie it what feels about right, where it just barely touches. And honestly, it looks kind of weird with the bow. So in the future, I'll probably tie it if I'm going to wear this on the outside as it's on its own. I might tie that to where the bow is on the inside just so it's not showing. But it kind of looks a little cute with the bow there, don't you think? Okay, other one. This is the first time I've actually done the shoulder straps the correct way. I've always had to pin the ribbons down into the bodice with pins because I didn't have the holes there yet. So this is this is new for me. And you will also notice that somehow or another I ended up with the shoulder straps at slightly different lengths. So that is a little weird, but it is not the end of the world. Okay, I did not lace these up to where this is sitting symmetrically. This hole is way farther over than that one, but that is not the end of the world. Holy gee, I forgot that these grommets loosen up over time, though the ones on the back aren't as tight anymore. But anywho, there. Oh, actually, I tied a slip knot, so it's like adjustable now. Okay, so, there we have it. I'm fully laced in, I've got the shoulder straps in. They're really stinking cute. And now that I have the shoulder straps actually tightened for the first time, like doing their job, it actually does feel like these are helping just a little bit keep these in place and help them not slide up and down. So now that I try them on, it's kind of like, duh, that's what the shoulder straps are for. That might be a big reason of why they're moving around. Cause like now <laughs> when I laugh, that was a fake laugh, but when I laugh, <laughs> they don't feel like they're doing that anymore. So duh, the shoulder straps are there for a reason. So yeah, shoulder straps, Kind of for the finishing piece that help make it more secure. They are very comfortable, very supportive, and now that I have the shoulder straps tightened and I've gotten it fully tightened in the back, I actually don't know that they need to be any smaller because now when I bend over or when I get down on the floor, they don't really feel like they're moving around because the shoulder straps help keep them in place. So I think these are actually about perfect. The waist might stand to be a little bit smaller just if I wanted to try to get it a little bit less room there because as you can see I can still get a lot of room because I have quite a small waist but it's not the end of the world and I don't want to tight lace or anything crazy like that but it's just something to make note of for the future. I guess now I will just do a couple of twirls for you so you can see the whole thing and bravo to simplicity because this pattern even with all the fitting I had to do is amazing. I feel like patterns like that have a reputation for not being the greatest thing for costuming. And fair enough, this one was out of print, so uh, some of the ones they make now, I, at least some of them I know aren't as accurate and are more just fun renaissance fair, but not any particular historical accuracy, which is fine. But Bravo Simplicity, you should bring back stuff like this because this is a solid, this is a solid costume piece and it's very, very close to some of the pieces that I looked at when I was doing my research, so. this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and smash the subscribe button. Be sure to stick around for my different storytelling adventures. Like I think I've said before, costuming adventures I don't post about as much, but the book that I made these for I have posted quite a bit about, and I post a lot about writing and self-publishing in general. The shoulder strap is going to fall off. It's still just a little bit too long, but it is still these fit amazing. Anyway, I digress. I'm too busy enjoying 
the comfort of these studies because they're so comfy. But I hope that you will stick around for my different storytelling adventures. I am planning on doing an event called Camp NaNoWriMo in July. And if you're not familiar with that, Camp NaNoWriMo is a writing challenge where you set your writing goal. I'm probably going to set a 40,000, set a goal of 40,000 words, and you try to hit your goal within a month. So basically, I'm going to be trying to write almost a complete novel in a month. And as you might have gathered, I enjoy doing historical fiction. And what you might not have gathered quite as easily is I focus primarily on seafaring stories. So if you like that kind of vibe, be sure to stick around because we have a lot of fun with writing and with historical fiction stuff here on this channel. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!